this video is going to document me putting a mirror polish edge on my Mora Bushcraft Black. So this Bora, Mora, Bora, Mora Bushcraft Black uh, is a really long, long standing knife on the channel and with me. I used to use this as an everyday carry fixed blade knife when I lived out on the block. Um, rural stuff, doing rural jobs um, relating to wood and to you know, fencing and to uh, digging out and laying um, uh, cement and just proper, you know, not homesteading, I'm not that cool, but um, you know, enough to you know, use a fixed blade knife most days. Uh, so it did a whole lot of work for me and also it sort of coincided with me growing the knife interest and so I really did mess with it a whole bunch as well. So this knife's always bothered me, I hadn't used it for a while, it had been sitting in my shed, had a little bit of rust on it, but more importantly it had all sorts of oddness about the grind. I just stone sharpened it a whole bunch of times, in fact I stone sharpened it to a true Scandi eliminating the micro bevel. I'm not sure why um, I did it. I just remember doing it as a you know, novice knife sharpener years ago. Um, I thought it looked cool mostly, <laughs> but um, so yeah, I've, it's bothered me. I don't really use it anymore, I must say, but I wanted to sort of give it a nice edge so at least you can sit around looking pretty from now on. So I thought I've got my KME system, which is here. I thought let's put a nice mirror edge on it. So what I did was I grabbed out the stones first, rigged it up, and got to work. So first thing I'm going to do is colour in this entire silver edge black. So that way I will know if the KME is taking off all the black then it is doing the Scandi edge making it nice and even. These are going to be the first five stones that I use. I'm going to go from the beast. This will fix any imperfections um, on this, um, you know, if this bevel is slightly bigger than this bevel, it'll make them both even. Then I'm going to use the 140 grit, the 300 grit for a fairly long time, and the 600 grit for probably the longest time. I find that these scratches are quite hard to get out, and by the time you get to 600, they're looking pretty good. Then 1500, which I'll use for a long time still, then that will trail into use of the films, which I'll show you when I get to them. So I worked a whole lot with the 50 grit stone. And the 50 grit is a um, real material removal stone and it puts deep scratches in the uh, steel but it does reprofile the edges to flat like the stones are. And this is what this knife needed a whole lot of. My stone sharpening had slightly convex, the, the stone parts, it was just uneven. And while it looked okay from the outset, it uh, wasn't as fine nor as refined as it should have been. So I did a whole lot of work with the more coarse KME stones, really working away at that. I probably spent about an hour and a half with the, just the core stones, really getting it nice and even, making sure all that black texture was wiped off. I repeated that process a few times just to make sure. So then I moved up to the 300 and the 600 grit. Uh, the 300 I spent some time on, uh, I think I actually went back to the 150 when I was realizing that it wasn't still applying evenly over the whole surface. Um, a Scandi grind is pretty broad, so you need to have it really dialed in flat, dead flat for the stone to cover the whole edge with scratches at once, much more so than just a standard small bevel that you'd have on like a, any other knife that's not a Scandi. So it took a fair while to get me happy with, you know, yep, I'm pretty sure these stones with a few passes are covering the whole surface. Um, so went back to 150 or 140 sometimes, back and forth a little bit, but eventually I was on 300 and then 600. I think I spent the most time on the 600 grit because that's what really starts to form a sort of edge, a finished edge almost, an edge that will, you know, you'd be happy to sort of stop and cut things with as is. So following on from that, I spent a whole bunch of time on 1500 grit. 1500 grit uh, is still enough to still remove enough material that scratches will be minimized from the previous uh, grits of diamond stone. Um, but yeah, 600 and 1500 I generally spend the most time on because yeah, while they do present well and they do a good finish on the, on the uh, edge, they still do remove stuff. So if you are kind of still chasing those 150 grit coarse um, scratches then they kind of help with getting those off as well. A bit slower than you'd want but 
Yeah, it's just a, a good way of regulating. You stop and hover on these for a little while and you'll get yourself a nice even finish in the end. Uh, if you're gonna spend a lot of time on anything, I'd suggest spending a lot of time on these two grits to um, get everything nice and squared away for later. Because later on, uh, even as I see on this one, those deep scratches, that whether you can't, you might not be able to see them at first, but when you hold them to certain lights, you do still see them. So spend a lot of time on 600, a lot of time on 1500, and your films will just be more to finish and to add that mirror. So this is the 1500 finish. It's um, getting pretty sharp, and it's also getting a little bit of shine to it. Um, the swirly pattern there seems to change every time I change the angle, so I'm pretty sure the scratch pattern is all at the same depth, just swirls around a little bit. So yeah, the films were next. I went through all the Micron films. I started with obviously the 9, which is only an 1800 grit, which is basically still a stone, a pretty standard stone grit, and even the 6, which is 3000. Um, I spent a fair bit of time with those. Uh, I think I changed them both out to new ones, which I wouldn't recommend doing because it's a, um, you know, you chew through your films crazy quick, but because it's a bit of a special project, I wanted to do it just right. Using oil, obviously, which is the one that comes with the KME, just a little drop. And you still see, you see these still re do remove material because even when you wipe the steel off the knife, like all the shavings, all the powder of steel, these start to develop a black slurry, you know, quickly enough. So that's more steel coming off and mixing with that oil. So uh, these still do remove enough material to be, you know, properly de-scratching from the previous grits still. So spent a bit of time on these and then moved on to the properly fine ones, which is the, you know, from th three micron down to 0 0.10 micron. And after a whole lot of time, I, at about the one micron level, I started to notice a proper, uh, I would say like a, a dark mirror or a gray mirror, um, which is where you can see the reflection of, you know, yourself or of, you know, writing or whatever, but it's still just a darkness to it. Or a, like there's still enough of the deeper scratches or the, well, not deeper, but of the um, visible scratches to be catching that light and making it less shiny. So work with the 0.5 and the 0.10, the 0.10 micron uh, was what really got the mirror going. And so I polished away with those for a good long time. Down with motions, of course, you treat it just like a strop and off it goes. So yeah, in the end, well, you be the judge. What do you think of my, um, my mirror edge? I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, looking at it up close, there are still some scratches that if I could do it again, I probably would spend even more time at that 600 and 1500 grit. But for an edge that is um, more or less ceremonial only really, I doubt this will, it might get an edge test and then maybe even a micro bevel again. Um, it's got some swelly scratches, but I mean, most importantly, it's crazy sharp and it is, um, yeah, just really nice looking. To, yeah, I'd be lying if I said that you couldn't still see if you put, actual sunlight right on the edge, some swirly lighter scratches, but the overall mirror effect is in catching yourself, your reflection, holding it above text, all that sort of stuff, definitely intact. You can probably even see it mirroring around just there on the screen, just a little bit. So yeah, you can KME sharpen a more. It's just a matter of using that um, 50 grit stone or 140 grit if you don't have that long enough. I put my clamp right in the middle because I think that gives you the most even coverage and it does look like a nice even bevel all the way in the same amount of millimeters tall for the whole time. So um, the only thing it misses is right at the right at the heel of the blade, there is just a little bit of black from still from the texture that the arm just can't get. You'd have to start it here and go out and that would muck with the angle. So if you started your, if the middle of the KME or the clamp was put here or right, you know, at this, where the spine meets the, um, the handle, you'd have some higher angles or some lower angles over this end, which would alter the look of the grind. So just had to choose and that's what I chose. But overall, pretty happy with my finish, my result. And yeah, I'd say if you have some time to spare, this isn't a quick and easy KME sharpen. This is a bit of a, 
bit of a task. Like it's a, to get it right, if you've got the same level of like obsession that I do, and I'm still not quite happy with this, but if you've got the same level of fixation that I do on getting that mirror, it's a fun little project. And really for me, because this knife is actually of some meaning to me, uh, I was very happy to, to do it and you know, happy enough with the result. Whether I re revisit it or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but at any rate, mirror polish with KME is possible on a Scandi Grind Mora. Alright, hope you've enjoyed. I'll uh, see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.